Picture this, it's an island full of little demons who are all running around trying their hardest to become the ultimate warrior. No, it's not the newest season of Fortnite, but rather Oni, Road to be the Mightiest Oni. A new adventure game starring a tiny demon with a mighty backpack and an even mightier club. Can this little guy survive long enough to get the victory royale? Find out now when I review Oni, Road to be the Mightiest Oni. Welcome to Kisajima Island, a small island in the middle of the ocean where demons go to sharpen their teeth. Although the scenic island appears to be empty at first, it won't take much to stir the spirit, setting up a series of increasingly challenging missions where our hero Kuda fights the local demons in an effort to, you guessed it, become the mightiest Oni. Along the way, the cute little demon will start an unlikely friendship with a human girl that'll change his life forever. This sets up a cute and fun beat-em-up as he's Kuda learn a lot about empathy and confront his own trauma and biases, all while fighting evil spirits, exploring the small island, and most importantly, picking up mushrooms. It's not the world's deepest action game, but the more than three dozen stages are short, and the story of a demon and human friendship is delightful. Now, when I talk about the stages, I want you to know that they're more like arena battles. This is not the kind of game where you go on a grand adventure and have to navigate platforms and obstacles in hopes of reaching the end of the level. Instead, what we get is a series of fairly straightforward battles where we're locked into a tight circle and forced to go up against wave after wave of enemies of all different types and sizes. Sometimes it'll be a bunch of similarly sized demons, while other times the bad guys will be massive and team up with ghosts and bomb throwing dolls. If you can survive the fight, you'll be one step closer to becoming the mightiest Oni. The good news is that Kuda always has a helpful spirit by his side. This is a ghost character who will suck up the enemy's souls and help you out in a pinch. For example, the ghost will be able to use the energy that he's gathered to heal Kuda in some of the tougher battles. You can also use the ghost as a way to teleport our hero to hard to reach areas, such as a bunch of small rocks in the middle of the ocean. Best of all, the ghost has a number of uses in battle, and being able to control his movement independently helps to set this game apart from other action brawlers. It also helps that Kuda can unlock and learn several different special attacks, such as becoming invincible for a short amount of time, jumping high up into the air to escape damage, and calling in two doppelgangers to help finish the fight. We'll also be able to upgrade our hero by purchasing new clubs and shorts, which will of course give the little guy more strength than armor. The good news is that the island's entire economy seems to be based on mushrooms, a readily available vegetable that will grow back every time you pick one. Unfortunately, this is where you notice how simplistic and shallow this game really is. There are only a half dozen clubs and shorts to pick up, and a couple of them you'll just completely skip over since it's always so easy to find and pick mushrooms. This is a constant reminder that there isn't a whole lot to the fighting, which is what you're going to be spending most of your time doing in Kisajima Island. Sure, there's a cute story about an unlikely friendship, but that's mostly relegated to brief cinemas between missions. When you're actually locked into the combat, you'll end up doing a whole lot of button mashing. Now, the game does try to mix up the stages by adding different camera perspectives, such as a 2D side-scrolling stage or one fight where it's presented from an overhead point of view. There are also a few stages that happen at night, which supposedly limits the visibility, but I didn't find that it changed all that much. No matter what they do to shake things up, the core battle is just very samey and repetitive. Many are far too easy, with only a handful of stages needing any kind of strategy. I was hoping for a bit more. The same goes for the island itself, which is surprisingly small and boring. There are a few cool highlights, such as a graveyard and the village in the forest, but you can traverse the entire island in just a couple of minutes. You treat opening up new portions of the map as if it's a big deal, yet it's just more of the same and extremely anticlimactic. Different parts of the island simply aren't unique enough to warrant being excited. And it's not like there's a whole lot of mystery surrounding the closed off sections. That's disappointing. 
The good news is that the game is saved by some epic boss fights and a cute story that you'll want to see through to the very end. There's a point where the action really begins to heat up, and I won't lie, I got completely swept up in the excitement. Couple that with the colorful graphics and catchy soundtrack full of songs with actual lyrics and singing, and you have a cute little action game that is definitely good, but comes up short of being great. Train your little demon character to be the most powerful little demon in the world in Oni, Road to be the Mightiest Oni, a game about becoming the best and finding friendship in unlikely places. This cute and colorful game may suffer from all the typical problems associated with the beat-em-up genre, but its charm helps to overcome some of the shortcomings and the final third of the game is genuinely exciting. Too bad the combat is every bit as repetitive as the wonky title. Leaving Oni, Road to be the Mightiest Oni, is a game that is certainly fun, but maybe not a must-play. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now, here's the question I have for you. Who is the Mightiest Demon? Oh, I can't wait to see your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back later this week with a look at Sound Dodger 2, as well as more stuff. If that sounds good to you, then I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.